Good morning everyone, and welcome to this mini-series where we will explore all things related to cholesterol and heart health. I'm your host, Mark Ferris, and today we're kicking things off by learning about cholesterol testing. As most of us know, high cholesterol can be detrimental to our heart health if left unchecked. A cholesterol test is a simple but important tool that can help us understand our personal risk levels. What is a cholesterol test? A cholesterol test, also known as a lipid panel or lipid profile, is a common blood test that measures the amounts of cholesterol and triglycerides circulating in our bloodstream. Specifically, it provides values for total cholesterol, LDL or bad, cholesterol, HDL or good, cholesterol, and triglycerides. By getting these key numbers, the test offers insights into how our lifestyle may be impacting our risk of developing heart disease over time. Why is it done? While high cholesterol itself causes no obvious symptoms, it significantly increases our chances of developing life-threatening conditions like heart attacks if left unaddressed. The purpose of a cholesterol test is to detect any elevated readings that could point to underlying issues. Even if we feel perfectly healthy, it's easy for cholesterol levels to rise slowly over the years without us noticing. Getting regular testing helps doctors monitor our numbers and address problems early before they escalate into serious health conditions. So in summary, the importance of the cholesterol test can't be overstated when it comes to protecting our long-term heart health. In upcoming segments, we'll look closer at who should get tested and how to understand your personal results. Until then, I hope you found this introduction helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions. Types of cholesterol. Four types of fats. The cholesterol test measures four main types of fat in our bloodstream. Let's break down each one and what their levels indicate for our heart health. Total cholesterol is the sum of all cholesterol present, including LDL, HDL, and VLDL cholesterol. The American Heart Association recommends keeping total levels below 200 mg per deciliter to reduce heart disease risk. LDL, or bad, cholesterol, is the primary contributor to plaque buildup in the arteries. When LDL cholesterol circulating in blood is high, it can cause fatty deposits to slowly accumulate in artery walls over many years. This process, called atherosclerosis, increases the risk of blocked blood flow and heart attacks. Lower levels of LDL cholesterol are ideal. HDL, or good, cholesterol, carries LDL from the arteries back to the liver for processing. A high HDL level plays a protective role by preventing plaque from forming and potentially clearing out particles already deposited. Men should aim for HDL levels over 40 mg per deciliter, while it's over 50 mg per deciliter for women. Triglycerides are a type of fat circulating in the bloodstream after we eat. While normal levels are under 150 mg per deciliter, very high triglyceride levels have been linked to an increased risk of heart disease, even in the absence of other risk factors like smoking. Risk Factors and Associations now that we understand the roles of each cholesterol subtype, let's discuss how they contribute to heart disease development over time. Having high levels of LDL cholesterol is a major concern as it allows fatty plaque to slowly build up in our artery walls for decades, even without symptoms. This condition, called atherosclerosis, progressively narrows the arteries and limits blood flow to the heart, elevating the risks of heart attack and stroke. Lifestyle habits strongly influence our cholesterol numbers and long-term health. For instance, an unhealthy diet high in saturated and trans fats tends to drive total and LDL cholesterol up. Similarly, behaviors like smoking cigarettes, excess weight gain from inactivity, and lack of exercise can negatively impact cholesterol profiles and compound heart disease risks. Maintaining a favorable lifestyle focused on nutritious eating, Fitness, weight control and avoiding tobacco offers the best defense against unhealthy cholesterol levels as we age. Who should get tested? Guidelines for cholesterol screening. The National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute provides clear recommendations about who and how often people need cholesterol screening. 
They suggest all adults get an initial check between ages 9-11, then repeat testing every five years thereafter if under 45. For adults aged 45 to 65, whether male or female, screening should occur once every five years at minimum. From ages 65 plus, annual testing is advised due to increased heart disease risk as we grow older. Frequent monitoring in later life helps doctors promptly address any concerning rises in cholesterol levels. Special cases. Certain personal factors may warrant more vigilant screening on a one to two year interval. This includes having a strong family history of high cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, or actively smoking cigarettes. Individuals in these high-risk groups stand to benefit most from closer surveillance of their lipid profile numbers. Additionally, those already diagnosed with cardiovascular issues like coronary artery disease tend to require annual if not more frequent cholesterol tests. Close monitoring ensures medications and lifestyle changes effectively control lipids over the long term. Another special case are people taking cholesterol-lowering statin drugs. Doctors will typically test levels 4 to 12 weeks after starting or modifying statin therapy, then repeat every 3 to 12 months based on initial response. This follow-up testing plays a key role in refining treatment to hit cholesterol targets. In summary, cholesterol screening adherence empowers both patients and physicians to head off future heart problems. Knowing your individual risk profile guides decision-making around diet, exercise habits, and possible drug treatments when lifestyle modifications prove insufficient. Don't hesitate to discuss your unique risk factors with your doctor. The cholesterol test process. Preparation for the test. When getting a cholesterol test, it's typically required for patients to fast for 9 to 12 hours beforehand. This means avoiding all food and beverages aside from water during this fasting window before your appointment. Fasting ensures accurate lipid readings by eliminating any impact from recent meals. Some exceptions where fasting may not be necessary include certain screening tests done first thing in the morning without breakfast yet. Always confirm the guidelines with your doctor's office. Proper preparation leads to reliable test results you both can use to guide next steps. The test procedure. On the day of your cholesterol screening, plan to have your blood drawn at your doctor's lab. No special clothing is needed, just roll up your sleeve. The technician will clean a spot on your arm before inserting a small needle into a vein to draw blood, usually from the inner elbow area. Most patients feel little to no pain from the quick needle prick. After the blood is collected into vials or tubes, a bandage may be applied. The entire process takes just 5 to 10 minutes. Remember, the practitioner has done this thousands of times, so there's no need to worry. Post-test. Once your blood sample is taken, the medical staff's job is done. You're free to go right away without any restrictions on driving or activity. The lab will examine your blood for cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Results will be sent to your doctor one to three days later to discuss the meaning. Don't sweat the weight, it's a low-risk procedure even with fasting involved. Remember to eat something if hungry post-test. With preparation and cooperation during the simple blood draw, the cholesterol screening gives valuable insight without discomfort. Interpreting cholesterol test results. Understanding cholesterol levels. Your doctor will review your results using specific measurement units. In the U.S., levels are reported in milligrams per deciliter, milligram per deciliter. Canada and Europe use millimoles per liter, MMOLL. For total cholesterol, LDL, and triglycerides, lower numbers are better. Being at or below the following thresholds reduces heart disease risk. Total cholesterol, less than 200 milligrams per deciliter, 5 MMOLL. LDL, bad. Cholesterol, less than 100 mg per deciliter, 2.6 mmol/l. Triglycerides, less than 150 mg per deciliter, 1.7 mmol/l. HDL, good. Cholesterol is a bit different. Higher levels are protective. 
targets are 40 mg per deciliter, 1 mmol, L, or above for men, 50 mg per deciliter, 1.3 mmol, L, for women. What high results mean? While high cholesterol doesn't have noticeable symptoms, it's crucial to address if test numbers come back elevated. However, don't feel discouraged. The good news is lifestyle modifications like a healthier diet, quitting smoking, exercise, and weight control can lower LDL cholesterol by up to 30% for many people. If diet and exercise changes aren't enough, your doctor may recommend cholesterol-lowering medications as part of your treatment plan. Satins are a common type of drug prescribed to block cholesterol production. They effectively lower LDL when needed, especially for those at higher risk. Through monitoring with repeat testing, you and your medical provider can work as a team to reduce cholesterol to safer levels over time. Staying motivated with lifestyle habits and complying with any drug therapy prescribed will significantly lower your long-term risks. Taking action for heart health. Lifestyle changes. Making positive choices is critical to managing cholesterol naturally. A diet low in unhealthy fats can help significantly. Focus on whole grains, fruits, veggies, fish, and limit red meat to 6 ounces daily. Staying active for 150 minutes weekly also pays off. Even small steps like taking the stairs add up. If you smoke, quitting is vital. Smoking damages arteries and overwhelms the good HDL cholesterol. Within a year of quitting, heart disease risks begin declining. Speaking of stress, deep breathing, yoga or social support fight mental health issues that impact physical health as well. Controlling portions and avoiding excess alcohol are equally important. Losing even 5-10% to of your body weight through calorie awareness can have a positive effect. Consistency, patience and community are key to making long-lasting improvements. Medical interventions. If lifestyle modifications alone don't sufficiently reduce cholesterol levels, medicines prescribed by your doctor are a smart choice. Satins remain the first line of treatment due to proven safety records. They safely decrease LDL levels by 25-60% to 60 depending on the medication and individual. Other drugs like azetamibe and PCSK9 inhibitors also help by blocking cholesterol absorption or production. Always take any prescribed satins or medications as directed to maximize heart protection. Don't forget about alternate therapies such as plant sterols, red yeast rice or fiber supplements as complementary options too with your doctor say so. Closing thoughts. Gentle listeners, the path to heart health is simple yet requires vigilance. Thanks for joining me in learning about the importance of cholesterol testing, feasible lifestyle changes, and available treatment approaches. I encourage you to prioritize your well-being through regular screenings, nutritious fuel for your temple of a body, exercise, mental rest and minimized stressors when possible. Have an open dialogue with your physician too to create a personalized prevention plan. Remember, small consistent efforts really do count. Wishing you all the very best.